Hello everyone, my name is Pixorus, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We are back over here at the Mountain Project, and I am super happy with the view from this direction. There are still some areas I want to add snow to, but all in all, I think this Mountain Project has come along super well. I really like the view we are getting from basically all angles at this point. However, the view we get from this angle is lacking somewhat. It is lacking somewhat in actually having a ski village here and while there are boxes up for various things and there are a few different projects in motion here like the uh, fox powered chicken farm over there we have a snow farm in here we have a fox powered sweet berry farm which i haven't really been running but inside of here we at least have a handful of foxes gathering a handful of berries for us here and there i am still kind of feeling like we need to do some more work in the ski village department and for that i thought we would take a look at doing something that you can do in your own worlds although probably in a different position and on a different scale and that's giving a village a bit of a makeover villages are obviously going to generate in a variety of biomes snow plains like this will generate a snowy plains village which as you can see makes pretty heavy use of spruce wood We've got spruce wood at little farms here and there as well we'll have a village bell and some lanterns and of course these igloo like constructions that are made out of blue ice and packed ice so that the light around them does not melt them and yeah a little bit of snow blockage here and there as well and i like the design of this place but i honestly think that in terms of making this look a little bit more modern making it look a little bit more like a ski village it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a normal looking minecraft village here so i'm thinking we need to give this place one heck of a makeover and it is something that you can do with other villages elsewhere as well and really all you need to do to make sure that your villagers still feel like they have some place to live is stick around with a bunch of beds and a bunch of workstations. There is one guy in here who seems to be keeping this cow company. I think the rest of the villagers in here have probably been taken care of by pillager raids or zombies or something like that. Pillager patrols rather than raids, I suppose. But yeah, I don't really see a great deal of villagers around here. And so if we want to increase the population here, putting out some beds is not really going to do very much because we'll just have this one guy left here. But I think if we find a zombie villager that we can cure, we might be able to get the population back up. And really, it doesn't matter too much what kind of houses they have as long as they can pathfind to their beds and their workstations. So I think the first thing we're going to do is set up an area over here where I want to build a kind of ski chalet. In a similar vein to the modern house that we have over there, I want this to be a contemporary sort of structure, but with a nod to the environment, to the, the, uh, the kind of house you might expect to find in this area. And I've been doing a little bit of research. I've come up with a couple of really nice reference images from Google, one of which I'll put on the screen right now. And that is going to be the idea behind a house that we are probably going to build over here behind what I imagine to be a row of shops. This is the kind of commercial center of the town where people might come to get a drink or something to eat or, you know, buy some, rent some ski apparel so that they can go up the mountain, which eventually will have like ski lifts and stuff on it as well. But I think we're going to have some proper housing around here, some places that people could rent accommodation so that they could stay here more permanently. And so I think it's going to be really nice to have one of those here, maybe kind of linked up with this section of the area and kind of replacing a few of the village houses. Now, the villagers won't mind too much if you take houses down. They're not going to get too mad at you for that. And honestly, I think it's only one villager here anyway, as far as I can tell. So that guy was not going to be lacking a home. In fact, he seems to have made a home up there with the cow anyway. So I really don't see this being a problem. So we're going to take down a bunch of these materials that we should be able to reuse over the course of the project. And I've been doing a little bit of farming of dark oak wood as well, because we're going to be using a lot of dark oak to contrast with the spruce to get a nice dark tone to the wood as well. I think that's going to be a really nice color palette. So without further ado, let's start building up the foundation of our first ski chalet house. So for now, here is the foundation that we're working with. And I've been tinkering around with the format of this house a little bit in a creative mode test world. So I'm working from that as a framework. I really recommend if you're working with something like this and you want to test out a couple of designs first, maybe build a couple in creative. It should give you a better idea of the materials you're going to need and the amounts. So yeah, what I've got here right now is just a stone foundation. It's pretty long on this side, starting out with a six block wide area here with an archway 
that you can have a little ground level entrance because if people are coming in from the slopes they might have snow all over their boots you want some place that can have like a wet room basically an area where you can take off all of that snowy gear and it doesn't matter too much if you know the snow melts and water gets everywhere you're not going to come out into the living room and get water all over the rug that way that kind of thing so yeah it's going to have a, a little archway here that's going to lead into the rest of the house maybe a downstairs area with some sort of like low kitchen and the most of the foundation of this house is going to be made of stone the reason for that being of course that while you find a lot of the houses in these snowy areas are typically made of wood or have kind of wood panel wood siding to them the foundations are going to be stone because that can withstand the cold it's pretty well insulated and all of the snow can pile up around the outside without too much damage to the materials involved in the build itself i feel like these are building methods which have dated back quite a long time but are still used today so it kind of makes sense for them to be here in a contemporary ski resort. This wall over here is going to be sort of 10 or 11 blocks long and have a little pillar out to the side here. And I'm thinking about maybe making a back entrance to the upstairs section of the house. And this is all going to have a balcony that stretches around it on the outside, supported by these wooden pillars and these three block wide sections of stone in between. And the idea here, sorry I had to go and sleep to make sure it wasn't going to get too dark for a second there, the idea is that the whole thing is going to have multiple structures within it. So there's going to be a living space and several divided up areas of you know, sleeping quarters where people can go and hang out. And there might even be an outside staircase leading up to some areas so that people can go straight up to their bedroom from the outside of the house if they want to. So there's going to be a lot of different entrances and exits. The layout is going to be a little bit more complex, but should be relatively straightforward to build. And the construction of this is going to necessitate us taking down our first village house. But as you can probably tell, there isn't a great deal of stuff supporting this underneath. There is a floor of these stripped log blocks, but aside from that, not really a whole foundation holding this thing up in fact it kind of spirals down here into a little cave area and I think that continues further down yeah okay so there's not too much danger here from mobs and stuff popping out here but it does seem like this house doesn't really have any kind of foundation so I'm gonna just take the entire thing down and we'll probably end up taking down this house here as well since that might interfere with what we're building on the back half of the structure so repurposing all of the spruce wood from the house we just took down I've created this kind of walkway around the outside of the house and it's going to be a little bit broader in this area because one of the structures of the house is actually going to be set back a little way so we're going to have a wider balcony area that people could come and sit outside if it's a nice day this is all slabs by the way so it's all just going to be spawn proof naturally we might light it up a little bit later on but this section here is going to be two blocks wide allowing people to walk around the outside of the house maybe access an exterior staircase somewhere over here but it's going to be outlined with a kind of series of trap doors which we're going to use to frame out a balcony area a little bit and make it feel a little bit more like there is a guardrail here although I'm not gonna make it two blocks high so it's not going to be functional as a guardrail within Minecraft itself I just feel like that shielded too much of the build from view if you're just walking around at ground level here so it's not exactly gonna be functional but I think it's going to be kind of nice to have it for aesthetic purposes and we can put on little accents like this every so often where we have one of these spruce wood pillars we also have a couple of spruce wood trap doors making it look like this thing is bracketed in place. We're also going to do something else in a second with fences, which will have more or less the same effect like this. If we put a fence gate in the second in the middle here, we put fences either side and then we open that fence gate. It's kind of a different looking style of bracket because it has two brackets attaching it to the wall and this little section here. We're going to put windows in here at the basement level kind of ground floor area and that's going to feel a little bit more like this place has something inside of it. We're going to potentially put a kitchen area in there, but I'm more focused on the exterior right now than I am the interior. So we're going to do the same thing along here with three oak trap doors and then a spruce trap door, and then we'll add a spruce trap door over there on the corner as well. Actually, forget the part I just said about the spruce trap door. The maths didn't work out in my favor there, but the rest of this is looking quite nice. So I've started to add a little bit of glass in there as well, thanks to a glass pane I took out of one of the village houses, and I think this is looking pretty solid as a foundation. I guess we need to work out where the back half of the house is going to go, but for now, I think we can move on to building up the rest of the structure. So the next step here is already basically done. I've just outlined where the floor is going to go in this build, and as as before I am working slightly from the creative mode test build that I did of this in a separate world but I'm also working from the reference image that I got from Google and I think the cool thing about this is that you end up with a variety of materials being used. On the corner here, we're going to place a little section of a stone wall that's actually going to have some wooden siding provided by some more 
spruce trapdoors. This is going to come in two blocks. We're going to leave a three block gap for a window, which, you know, in reality is a sliding door, but we're just going to have fairly plain glass windows on the front here because Minecraft doesn't really allow for stuff like that. Another three blocks over, another wooden pillar there. And then on the corner here, we're going to add some bushes so that we can have a kind of diagonal wall here with a little bit of decoration on the side we're going to put some note blocks there with spruce leaves on top of them for bushes and then the framing of the house is going to start from here so for the stone walled sections of this build, I've actually used a bit of a gradient, starting with cobblestone at the bottom here, going up into andesite, and then from there, just stone. And I like this a lot. I think it gives a really nice texture to it. It makes it look kind of implied that there is cobblestone here, but then also smooths it out a little bit further up and kind of adds those light highlights that you get with andesite, which I do mix in a couple of times on the higher sections of the wall. So this one here, for example, I put a couple of pieces of cobblestone further up, but it's mostly around the bottom of the build. And then the andesite and stuff kind of comes in a little bit higher up. And that gives it a little bit of a lighter feel than the rest of this gray stone while mixing up the texture a bit and making it look a little bit more than just a flat stone wall. Could mix in some stone bricks here and there if we wanted to, but I like the idea that this has been built using that kind of pebble dash effect on the outside of the walls, which is just going to give it a little bit more surface area, which means that the snow is going to stick to it a little bit less. So on this wall along the front here, we are going to leave room for another three block high glass window on the upstairs floor. The stone wall is going to continue upwards, and this is where the line of the roof starts. So we're actually going to place a log facing outwards like that to support the roof. Come along this other side here, frame it out on this side as well using the same dark oak logs. Might mix in a few spruce logs later, but once again, we're going to put that outward facing log on the corner there and that is looking pretty good to me so far all of these logs are now going to be stripped logs and i really like the texture of dark oak stripped i think it looks very good so we're going to go with that for the majority of the build just to save everything looking like a kind of pillar of wood or rather to save it having that bark texture which i think yeah di differentiates this section of the build which is meant to look a little bit more kind of organized and modern from the lower section of the build which has that slightly more rustic feel flying back up to the top of the build here we are going to go up one two three four more blocks and that is where the outline of the roof is going to go and we're going to fill in the sides here with some more spruce wood planks just in a kind of triangular formation like this up to there and we'll do the same on the opposite side and that's going to help us outline the roof a little bit later on the roof here is actually going to be a little bit more complex and there's a good reason for that because Houses like this are going to have a roof that actually sticks out a fair way just for shelter of anybody who is standing below. And shelter is something that I've considered quite heavily in the design of this, even though, like I said, I've been working from a reference image. I've been taking into account why they've built stuff a certain way. And having overhangs in builds like this is essential if it's snowing outside or if the weather conditions aren't too great, you have somewhere to stand. The same with this little kind of porch area here. You have an enclosed area with a roof over your head so that you can step inside and hang out if it gets particularly nasty outside. Now around the side here, this wall is going to be three blocks wide. I'm going to add some trapdoors to the outside of this as a kind of wooden siding style thing. We're going to have that kind of follow this triangular line upwards like that just to give it a little bit of decoration the top part there is not going to matter because that's going to have a roof over the top of it and we're going to build a kind of once again thinking about shelter here we're going to build a kind of a set of archways over here that's going to start with a doorway reaching out from the side here like this so we're just going to come up a few blocks there and have a doorway in there with some spruce doors inset into it all of that is going to be stripped wood. We'll come in here and place a spruce double door like that so that opens out into the frame nice and easily. And that can, once again, turn into a sheltered section over the top here. So we come up one more block and then over like this. And where it reaches this stone section, which I've exposed here by cutting the balcony down to just a single block there, we're going to come up with a few arches that are going to be made out of the same gradient of cobblestone andesite and then a regular stone and that's going to provide a set of sort of open windows out here which aren't going to have any glass in them or anything but it's just going to provide a framed section here on the side of the build once again helping it look a little bit more modern i've now hopped my way up here and i'm figuring out the roof line of this build i'm doing that now because it will help figure out where exactly the walls of the next set of structures are going to go we're going to have another building kind of built on the side here on top of these supports and that's going to have a higher roof line than the one we're about to build but we're going to start out by placing a block on top of there and then we're going to use some dark oak stairs to create a roof line like so with one dark oak stair inverted there 
up one spruce block and then repeat that pattern over and over again until we reach this central part in the middle where we're going to have a dark oak stair in the center and then come down from the opposite side and do the same thing. We can also add a block on the side there and add a roof line to the side here and from there we can actually put another dark oak stair underneath there like so we're skipping a block with the stairs just so that dark oak log can stand out and from the side there there we go we have a little bit of a roof line going on here in order to put some snow on top of this build which is really going to help the atmosphere of it we do need to leave full blocks available on top here we can't build it too much with slabs otherwise the snow is not going to be able to sit on top of those slabs whether as layers or as blocks it's not going to look right or it's not going to allow us to place it there at all so we're actually going to bring the roof line out one more block with a another set of dark oak stairs attached to the ends of these and then we're going to pile up snow on top of that roof line and that's really what's going to make this thing look like it has been snowed on. So we're going to come back along here and place an inverted stair on the side of every spruce plank that we just placed until it meets in the middle up here and that's where we're going to add a, a dark oak plank just to cap off the roof and make sure that we have some room here for some snow to be placed and I don't have any on me I guess. But while I'm down here grabbing that I may as well take out some of the snow blocks that form the sides of these igloos we're going to be taking down the blue ice and the packed ice as well we're going to potentially use those for icicles elsewhere in the build but it's going to be nice to reuse all of these materials from the village that we're taking down repurpose them for this build and make us feel a little bit better about just decimating the contents of this village otherwise there we go we can fit some dark oak planks in the middle there the spruce planks can now be brought back to form the larger part of the roof here and on top of those is where we're going to be placing these snow blocks remember of course that if you add snow layers in greater quantities than just a single layer that is also going to block mob spawns on this roof meaning that you don't need to light the entire thing up and that will be for the betterment of the build in general because if you start to light stuff up around here you're going to find that any snow or ice you use to decorate the build is going to melt or at least the snow layers are going to melt and the ice definitely will so probably a good idea to make sure that you have a spawn proof roof just using snow layers if you want that nice atmospheric effect to the place. So it's a little bit rudimentary, a little bit blocky looking with the snow blocks. We haven't added any snow layers in, but that is what our roof line now looks like from the outside. And I'm actually pretty happy with this as a simulation of what's in the Google image search that I did. It's kind of difficult with Minecraft roofs because you are stuck with the gradient of stairs or slabs. And in this case, we kind of want to use stairs so that we can have that top half surface covered in snow. And it's not really possible to create a shallower gradient using stairs in this way. So I'm pretty happy with the way this looks so far. We're going to build up a similar building on this side with a roof that's a little bit higher and is going to intersect with this one. I think we'll probably add a chimney in there somewhere in the mix as well, just so that we can have a hearth down here and the effect of campfire smoke curling up from the chimney pot. I think that's going to look pretty good. Okay, quick progress update time. This is where we're at with the build so far, having added the snow and the snow layers to the roof here, added this second roof on the back and a chimney at the top there that's a cauldron in between four walls with stairs inverted there and the chimney just kind of makes its way down into the build really happy with this so far added a few leaves around the outside to naturalize it added this balcony to the second floor of this section of the build and a nice glass window there nice closed off side of the build on this side because that could border other houses or it could just be for the sake of privacy but yeah I like the way this is coming together so far and adding some dark oak to the outline of the roof and kind of making a section of the roof there just kind of slope using slabs is a nice touch I think I think that's working pretty well for me so far so I still need to fill in the side walls of the build and do something with the back of it as well but I am really liking this overall style and I think what we're going to do is give the rest of the village a makeover in this style and make a kind of residential area where there are going to be chalets people could presumably rent out or, or buy or live in you know whenever they come here to ski for the winter I like the way this is turning out though I think it's a solid build style for the area so I think we'll go ahead and do some more work in the form of a time lapse
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and I hope you enjoy the new look of our ski village. These houses come together really well and once again it kind of has that backup dancer effect I was talking about with the trees where if you just build one thing it might look a little bit out of place but if you build a bunch of stuff around it in the same style all dancing the same dance with these blocks I feel like it comes together a lot better. It kind of creates a more cohesive and complete picture. So each of these houses is a little bit different from each other with the exception actually of that one there and that one there. Those are exactly the same house but just rotated by 90 degrees. I built that one first and then made a carbon copy of it over here because I liked the style of the house so much. And if you want to see part of the build process for this, you can check out my VODs channel, twitch.tv slash pixelriffs is where I live stream. All the VODs are up on there and they also get uploaded occasionally when I feel like they have something worth sharing over at youtube.com slash pixel VODs. So check those out if you want to see me building that house there and copying it over into that house there but I think this whole thing came together pretty well and while these houses do not have any interiors I've left the interiors blank for now we could come back and work on these if you guys are interested in seeing that also if you want any more kind of transformation projects like this where we take an existing Minecraft structure and we kind of build on it and make it a little bit more impressive I guess or you know kind of tailor it to our own desires I suppose is probably a better way of putting it. Then maybe give this video a like and let me know down in the comments section because I would absolutely love to do more projects like this. We could transform desert temples, jungle temples, ocean monuments. There is a whole lot of stuff to be had out there in the world of Minecraft. And while there is still a lot of this village left as far as the original structures and stuff are concerned, I could honestly go through building house after house like this. I really, really like the style that we've come up with here. Some of them may be still spawning mobs here and there because I haven't lit up the basements well enough, especially I think this one here needs a little bit of attention. But anyway, <laughs> I think this whole ski village aesthetic is coming together very well. And I think they really complement the area with the mountain quite nicely. Finally, we have some houses here that really feel like they belong. And that is where we're going to leave it for this episode. Now, you might notice the number of this episode. It's episode 299. So, of course, episode 300, the next episode, is going to be a world tour. And it's going to be a world tour with a bit of a twist. I'm not going to give too much of it away, but don't be surprised if it doesn't come along immediately after this video because I'm going to be working really hard on making this tour something a little bit special. So for now, I'm going to bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you enjoyed this video. My name has been Pixariffs. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.